Welcome to the Earth Feels Podcast. I'm Rose. And I'm Christine. Welcome to Earth Feels, the podcast for people feeling overwhelmed by the endlessly gloomy climate news. Where every week we have soul-based conversations about climate change and explore the idea that climate change may be happening for us as much as it is happening to us. If you are ready to shift your focus and secure the future for our kids and our grandkids, then this is the podcast for you. And yes, we do know how to spell. (laughs) Hi, Rose. Hello, Christine. Here we are, and we are going to give a stab at understanding what's going on in India, where they what's been described as the largest general strike in the history of the world happened um, in the last couple of months. And so what is going on there? And the reason it's come to my attention recently is because Greta Thunberg tweeted about it. And also Rihanna, the pop star. So I guess today's question is what's happening with the farmers? Why are, why are farmers protesting in India? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what, from what I understand, and let's just uh, start off by saying, I, I think I speak for both of us when I say we, ha- I have never been to India. Have you ever been to India? I have not. It is on okay. my bucket list. Okay. No, yes. And so we're bringing a, a North American perspective on this, and we're happy to share links uh, that are from people with more firsthand experience, but uh, we do want to talk about it because it's important in the from the perspective of climate because if anybody is familiar with Project Drawdown which Rose and I have talked about on and off uh, over our 120 some podcasts uh, here on Earth Fields uh, it's uh, small agriculture particularly women farmers are really part of the climate solution. So what is going on in India when tens of thousands, it sounds like, of farmers and also laborers in solidarity with farmers are going on strike? Protesting. um, They're actually all around New Delhi um, and have been gathering since as early as August, this right. August. Of- so it's more than just in New Delhi, but the largest one was in New Delhi. And the one that caught the attention, I think, outside of India and also inside of India was one in New Delhi on January 26th, which is apparently Republic Day in India. And uh, these peaceful protests What is Republic Day? In India? I I believe that's when they recognize the union that created the nation of India. And so it's, it's an important day for their country. And what happened then was uh, these farmers. Now, some in the Indian media are calling them terrorists, actually. Um, Yeah, exactly. Uh, They uh, went inside Delhi and actually went and occupied a place called the Red Fort. And uh, which is a a symbolic uh, for for Indians. And Mm -hmm. some of the farmers unfurled a Sikh flag. So what this did for months, it had been a peaceful uh, protest. The farmers want the government to change these three bills, which were, they feel were rushed through parliament without consultation uh, to the actual farmers. Um, and, but what happened was when they unfurled the Sikh flags, they uh, left themselves open to be called uh, separatists and uh, some people some people in the media and otherwise are calling them nationalists or terrorists sorry uh, because Modi is a Hindu nationalist his BJP party is kind of the equivalent in some ways of Trump's uh, it's, it's sort of a Trumpist party 
Oh, interesting. I know very little about Indian politics, um, but certainly feel, I'm certainly I'm concerned that the government there is wanting um, corporate investment into farming. I think that's that's the number one issue that these farmers have. Right, Would so I think they're just asking for consultation. Mm -hmm. Right, and I'm gonna pull up a document. So uh, Greta Thunberg tweeted about it on February 2nd, at, as we mentioned, as did uh, Rihanna around that time. And wow, both of them got piled on to uh, for meddling. Uh, mm -hmm. So what it says is the majority of land holdings in India, 86% of them are small and marginal. They're less than two hectares in size. Okay, I know you guys don't do hectares in the US, but okay. it's equivalent to acres, more or less. And okay. these households' incomes are already below what they spend on consumption. So these farmers have been marginalized historically, and in in by colonizers and and uh, more recently by globalization. So but there's. I think it's important to note here that um, from the statistics I read, sixty percent of Indian families are. Um, are attached to small business to small farming. So 60% of the population is is reliant on income from small farming. So mm -hmm. it's billions. It's like over I don't know how many billion uh, over a billion people are involved in in small farms. So this is pretty wide reaching. Right. And uh, there's been this uh, rash of suicides over the last 30 years. And uh, what this document says, it's despite thousands of suicides caused due to indebtedness and lack of structural support, an absence of solutions to deeply rooted problems has further been exacerbated by the new farm laws that were passed without any consultation with these farmers who provide the, for the majority of the Indian population's daily food consumption, like uh, you pointed out. So uh, it's, I mean, I remember, and we'll post some links if people want to do a deeper dive into exactly what these bills are, but it's being interpreted by their critics, by the critics of the bill as being pro-corporate, anti-small farmers. And so basically oppressing people that are marginalized uh, to start with. And um, it's true that uh, Narendra Modi, who's the Prime Minister of India is definitely right leaning, and mm -hmm. he's a Hindu nationalist. And the the government is doing other uh, policies that are marginalizing Muslims. But uh, the farmers are saying that these bills were rushed through, and they make it easier for corporations to exploit them and drive down prices. And it has to do with. So, I can draw a similarity to what happened in Canada in the under the Stephen Harper government, uh, who he got voted out when we got Trudeau in 2015, but he was very right leaning and he abolished the Canadian Wheat Board, which had been, uh, basically it was a cooperative that was created by Canadian farmers in, is it in the thirties or the forties? It had been around, you know, for decades and it helped farmers band together and get a decent price for uh, their their wheat. Now, some of the bigger farmers said, actually, we don't want to use the wheat board. We're big enough. We can uh, negotiate uh, prices for ourselves. And so they supported the bigger farmers and the corporations supported abolishing the wheat board, but it wasn't good for small farmers. And one of the bills does a very similar thing for Indian farmers. So they get support to buy uh, in, in, I'm not sure if it's in bulk as much, but basically this bill is forcing them in some way to negotiate a contract before they've even grown anything. And if they don't then supply, say, let's just say three cobs of corn, they promised three cobs of corn and they then deliver two and a half instead, then they're at a disadvantage with the 
and it's a corporation that they've uh, had to negotiate this with, and they then have to uh, basically are punished for not uh, producing what they promised. Whereas now they can just take their two and a half corn cobs to market and get whatever the market uh, offers them. Anyways. Yeah, I think my understanding is that the government of India is, is looking to grow you know, exponentially grow their, their GDP, which, um, which we know how the focus on profit for profit's sake has really created havoc in much of the Western world. Um, so they're taking away, right now the farmers have, they're dealing with the farmers, like a farmer's agent doing all the negotiation for them. By doing away with those agents, the farmers now have to negotiate, as you said, directly with who, whoever the buyer is. And a lot of those times it's corporations wanting to, you know, to buy up, to sell um, to, to bigger entities. So, the, but the government has basically determined that in order to grow, grow the GDP and grow quickly, they should, um, they should do away with this middleman and let market forces determine the price for the farmers. Um, the problem with that is that it's not exactly free market. Now, they can only sell within, Indi within India. They're not allowed to trade outside of India. So if, you, if it was on a worldwide market, market forces could come in and kind of level things out. Um, th that's, not, that's not part of the equation. But the farmers, in, in my understanding, and again, I'm not a farmer and I'm not in India, is that this leaves them, what you're saying, leaves them susceptible to um, not being able to pay their bills essentially. And so it leaves them susceptible to other, to the corporations coming in and buying them. And then the farmers don't have their independence anymore and now they're working for a corporation. And I think we've seen um, how, well, here, here in the States, Big Ag is, owns most of the farming. And then it becomes a monoculture and fertilizers and yada, yada, yada. It, it's a downward death spiral. For, and for, um, in the terms of climate change, which is what this podcast is, is about, it's terrible. Big agriculture is terrible for the climate because it, for all of those reasons that you just outlined, the chemicals, the monoculture, uh, everything like that. So we need more diversity, more small farms, not less. And so this bill or these three bills, they're, the bun they're, they're bundled together, seems to be expanding that corporatist sort of neoliberal agenda and completely ignoring the needs of the, the actual farmers that are, that are right now producing the majority of the food that India needs. So it's interesting because they are um, in some ways powerless, but banding together, they actually are extremely powerful because if they stop producing food, then no matter what Modi's idea of, you know, growing the economy is, that is uh, going to halt things. If people aren't getting fed, if Indians are going hungry, that will be an issue. And, I, and, and so they actually are quite powerful and they have uh, banded together with laborers and workers who have really suffered under the COVID restrictions, right? Because mm -hmm. there's restrictions if you're over 65, I believe they brought in restrictions early on in the pandemic, you can't go out and work. Well, if you are living a subsistence existence and your only way, even if, if you're 66 or 69 and you went out every day and whatever it was that you did uh to to help you survive you're completely cut off from that like there's it's it's a lot of um there's a lot of things going on but i do want to bring the uh, our listeners attention to the name of a 24 year old woman who is a uh a worker who went public, there's a video of her talking about why it's important for the workers and the farmers to work together on this. And uh, she was arrested, taken out of her tent 
by the police at uh, one of the, the, so she wasn't doing anything violent. She was in her tent and the police came and arrested her uh, about a month ago. And um, they've uh, kept her locked up. Uh, apparently she may well have been sexually assaulted while she was in custody. And so there's a movement to uh, release her. Her name's Nodeep Kaur, K-A-U-R. And we'll, we'll put links uh, on our website uh, about that because as we've talked about, the importance of women in, in uh, climate solutions can't be underestimated. And this is sort of a little microcosm of uh, where we can reach out and help this one particular uh, young woman who's fighting for other workers and the Indian farmers uh, to improve their situation. And she is being quite uh, oppressed because of her actions. How was she sing singled out for arrest? Was she, she was leading a movement on her own? She's, she's a work right right no she was she she was uh there's a video of her talking about why it's important uh, for workers and farmers to uh work together so that might be why why the police uh, singled her out so she has some kind of a following people were listening to what she well, said well i mean she was she was at the protest and uh she was visible enough that the police singled her out she's okay. not it's not like she's really a celebrity or high profile or anything in fact it's quite interesting because Bollywood uh, has a lot of uh, celebrities they are really high profile in India you know the you know what Bollywood is the Indian equivalent to Hollywood Correct. and uh, they have been pretty much uh, for the most part uh, supporting the government until okay. very recently yeah, and and uh, we can put a link to a podcast that I listened to, which analyzed the media coverage of what's going on. And again, a lot like in North America, the media is owned by people uh, by the one percent. So they have they have a vested interest in presenting things in a very specific way, and uh, they're definitely. I know the government in India shut down the internet for a while. Yes. They didn't want attention to be brought in. Yes. But then the farmers, I mean, it, it seems like the, um, the idea of collaboration and the, the, the idea of creating community, I know that they also, they shut down on Saturday, they, thousands of them um, across India, they, they shut down roads and highways in order to, to make their you know, to show their solidarity and to make their power, to draw attention to their power, that as a, as a coalition, they're a huge voting bloc. Yeah. So they just, they want the government to listen and they yeah. want the government to take, to take their um, needs and their ideas into um, consideration when they're with, and not, and not just forced through laws that pertain to them without any input from them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, um, people are rising. Yeah. And it's interesting that you, uh, brought up the shutting down of the internet. That's actually what Rihanna tweeted about. She's, she just, she tweeted with a link to the CNN article about the fact that the internet was being shut down around Delhi and around these protests. And all she said was, why aren't we talking about this? That's mm -hmm. all she said with a link to the article. And wow, she got some, uh, pretty stiff, uh, blowback from uh, people in India telling her uh, she didn't know what she was talking about, and and she really it was pretty a pretty neutral statement. Just hey, let's maybe we should be talking about this. But interestingly, do you know what the uh, Delhi police have done? They have actually brought a charge against Greta Thunberg for her tweet. They brought a case against her on charges of quote criminal conspiracy promoting enmity. Oh. For for tweeting that we stand in solidarity with the farmers' protests in India, so that's fascinating. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty interesting. But it sounds like the farmers um, have it in hand. I mean, they're they're going to 
they have they have the government over a barrel like you said if they're not producing food then yeah but but they're also being attacked they're also being violently attacked so they and being called enemies of the state they're being uh, it's being said that they're foreign backed and the government is saying we're out to unshackle the food industry of regulators and bureaucrats to drive growth. So that's all sounds very positive, doesn't it? Unshackling. We're, we're unshackling big business to take mm -hmm. over. That's what I hear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is just a, a conversation. I'm uh, happy to, uh, we will be happy to put in links uh, where people can take deeper dives and uh, including the link that uh, Greta shared, which has specific actions uh, that people can take. There's uh, petitions that you can sign, petition to abolish the three farm bills, petition to the UN, freedom to express dissent is a key pillar of democracy. And also if you're on Twitter, you can uh, use hashtags, uh, the stand with farmers and farmers protest hashtags. You can, uh, there's information on, on the internet uh, that you can take a deeper dive into, if you will. I think uh, as we've touched on, this is a climate issue because at this point in the climate emergency, we need to be encouraging and supporting small farmers, particularly women, and not giving big ag and big corporations even more of a pass than they've gone gotten already. Agreed. All right. Do we have good news? This new administration, there's always good news. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, the good news this week is General Motors has uh, agreed that, or has said that all of its vehicles will be EVs by, I think it's 2035. Yes. Did you see Which, the Will Ferrell ad? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. Um, it's it's a great move by by GM. Um, my you know my skepticism. Twenty thirty five, really? What? Mm -hmm. Why so? Why so long? Mm -hmm. But it, it is a move. You know that's the goal, and certainly um, market forces could force it to happen earlier. Yeah, it's like, all right, GM, you're finally get. I mean, they they were the ones who created the EV one who they could have been ahead of the bandwagon instead of lagging behind, but I guess better late than never. Well, and in three like three months ago when the Trump administration was saying that they weren't going to honor California's um, emission standards, um, GM was one of the companies that said, okay, then we won't either. You know, they, <laughs> they, so yeah, so which whatever way the wind blows, but um, thank you, GM for seeing which way the wind is blowing right now. That's good news. Okay. And our uh, sanity tip and, well, action tip, definitely uh, check out if you're on social media and you want to bring attention to what's going on in India, we'll have the hashtags out there, uh, which we've mentioned already. I stand with farmers and farmers protest. And uh, sanity tip, well, I'm uh, telling you, it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day here in Northern Ontario, but it, the wind chill was minus 47 this morning. So oh. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful, sunny day here in Southern California and it's 70 degrees. Mm. Well, I'm a, I'm an I love winter girl, so I'm not going to complain too too much. But uh, do whatever one needs to uh, for self care wherever you are in this February of pandemic times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going for a massage shortly, so that is my uh, self care. That and I had a Zoom call this weekend with some of my besties that I haven't talked to in a while and I have another zoom call uh, to chat with my sister over lunch sometime this week and so I decided I need to do more zoom calls just for fun instead of just for work wonderful thanks for listening that's this week's Friday episode of earth feels special thanks to singer songwriter Kristen Hoffman for generously allowing us to use song for the ocean 
Thanks for listening. Don't forget, subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss an episode. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Children of the earth, I'm calling out. There's a mission for you and for me.